By the time of the Stonewall Uprising, the Stonewall Inn was a bar that attracted a very eclectic crowd, from street kids to drag queens, to guys in sweaters and button-down shirts, sometimes guys in suits. So it was a really mixed crowd. Inside the bar, it was very balkanized. So you had one group at the bar, you had another group, another group in the back of the jukebox. Um, and people didn't necessarily mix, but they were in the same place. Stonewall wasn't the only bar for gay people in the village. There were all different kinds of bars. But Stonewall was a place where gay people could dance. And that was an exceptional place in the gay bar ecosphere of Greenwich Village in 1969. The Stonewall Inn was kind of a very precious site for a lot of the LGBTQ community. It was really unique because at the time, a lot of the other gay bars didn't allow you to dance together um, because they thought that would bring a lot of attention and that they would end up getting shut down. But the Stonewall did allow that. Um, so this was a really unique spot. Whenever I could get in, like on the weekend, whenever the crowd decided we wanted to do it. Sometimes there were people that were fun, we knew we were gonna be in there, we'd go. Sometimes, no. And you couldn't always get in. There was someone at the door that would let you in or not let you in. They had their reasons for this. I did go to Stonewall. Uh, didn't dance too much. It wasn't such a great dancer, you know. Slow dance here with the girls. But uh, drinking, definitely. Uh, and Stonewall was a dive. <laughs> you know, I, I can't uh, say it any nicer. You know, it was a dive. Uh, you never bought any mixed drinks there. You know, you bought your own because uh, hard, the water hardly ever worked, you know, so they'd be washing the glasses in dirty water, <laughs> you know, so you bought no no mixed drinks. You bought your own or you bought a bottle of beer, man, <laughs> you know, uh, but, it, you know, it was a place, you know, it, it's smaller now, you know, back then it had the other part to it. So when you walked in, you could go through this little alcove and there was another big room there, you know, and that's where most of us hung, you know, in those back rooms. Uh, but yeah, it was, it was a great place, you know, the music was kicking, people were happy, we were dancing, you know, it was, uh, it was, it was good. It was good, except when the cops came to, you know, uh, raid the places. <laughs> so one of the early landmark cases in the late 1950s was, uh, it concerned a magazine called One Magazine, and what could be sent through the mails. Um, post office regulations uh, made it illegal to send anything through the mail that was deemed uh, obscene. And gay people were deemed obscene by nature. So that if you sent a letter through the mail in which you talked about, uh, a, and you were a woman talking about a girlfriend, or you were a guy and were writing about your boyfriend, and someone got a hold of that letter and turned it over to the Postmaster General, you could be arrested for sending pornography through the mail, obscene material. So when this one particular issue of one magazine was sent out, um, and they sent it out from various points. They, they put it in mailboxes all over Southern California. What the post office did was impound all of these magazines and stored them in a warehouse. And they did that by claiming that the, that the postage was just under the legal amount. So the, the U.S. Postal Service was harassing this early gay rights group that was sending out a magazine that by today's standards, we would say was very benign. Um, but they were also poking fun at J. Edgar Hoover, at the FBI in those days, um, to try to get attention. And um, so it was, in some ways, it wasn't a surprise that the government went after them. But the case was, that there was a case brought that went all the way to the Supreme Court. And that we can mark as, I think it was 1959, as the beginning of when it was permissible to mail material through the U.S. Po uh, Postal Service that contained discussion of homosexuality. Oh, well. Beating up gays was a city sport. I mean, you could always tell the police officer, uh, you know, you're gay, and he came on to me. It was never, well, I remember the first incident I had where I heard someone, I was in Central Park in the evening, I'm not too deeply in, but I heard a horrifying cry. And I came out, and the police were on the corner, and I told the police, and they turned it on me. And uh, they had all the police together, say, he's got a queer story, he heard something in the park. Like, we deserve what we get the Twilight people, and nobody cares. They didn't care. They put me under the third degree. So I knew right then and there, I was 15, never say a word again. And I understood what people were talking about. I started to learn how to live on the street. And you had to know that in New York. Was